What's up you lunatics, Jam Horizon here, and today I'd like to talk about one of my all-time favorites. It's called Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It's funny, frenetic, somewhat flawed, and potentially baffling if you don't have the historical and literary context under your belt, but we will get to all of this. The film was released in 1998 and is based on a book of the same name written by American journalist and all-around party monster Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter was and still is an anomaly, gaining prominence for what he called gonzo journalism back in the 60s and 70s, wherein he would inject himself into the stories he covered, often under the influence of superhuman doses of psychedelics, cocaine, speed, and most importantly, alcohol. Just to name a portion of the multicolored galaxy of uppers, downers, screamers, and laughers that were floating around in his cerebellum at any given time. The result was the cultivation of a character often referred to as Raoul Duke, a crazed caricature of Hunter himself, and the mythology surrounding his insane adventures on the campaign trail for George McGovern, or indeed in this bizarre Vegas fable, still hold a strange mystique to this very day. His writing is both immensely funny and savagely moral, exemplified in no better way than his long-standing feud with Richard Nixon, who Thompson characterized as a foul caricature of himself, a man with no soul, no inner convictions, with the integrity of a hyena and the style of a poisoned toad. If you want to learn more about Hunter, there are many resources available at your local library. The novel is one of my favorites, even more so than the film. It's a somewhat embellished account of a short period of time where Hunter and Chicano lawyer-slash-activist Oscar Acosta went to Vegas and painted the town red, so to speak, originally to cover a story about a race called the Mint 400 before spiraling into an unbelievably decadent drug binge. Hotel rooms turn to swamps, and people into swamp creatures as the LSD flows. And while this element is part of the allure to fans of general insanity like myself, what takes it into the realms of truly great writing is the sociological overtones of investigating, the bizarro nature of the American dream, and ultimately composing a requiem for the lost spirit of the 60s and those who were left behind. I'll end this video with my favorite segment of the book, edited Jamo style, for those who are interested. The cinematic incarnation is directed by Terry Gilliam, who you may know from such recorded amalgams of picture and sound as Monty Python, Time Bandits, Brazil, and Twelve Monkeys. And while I'm not sure that no other director could have done it, Terry was just brave and bonkers enough to try, and his own wacky, imaginative directorial style does the material justice. Johnny Depp plays Hunter, aka Raul Duke, and Benicio del Toro plays Dr. Gonzo, the book's version of Oscar Acosta. These hilarious performances are a standout in both actors' careers, and their chemistry alone makes the movie worth watching, not to mention the people who show up in bit parts, like Tobey Maguire as a naive hitchhiker, Christina Ricci as a whacked out religious artist, Gary Busey as a highway patrolman, and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers in the role that made his career. Guy in bathroom who licks LSD off Duke's jacket. There are also plenty of wonderful scenes as our two protagonists of questionable heroism get loaded on ether and wander around the circus, crash a Debbie Reynolds concert, study the habits of neon street signs, and lounge in the ocean stoned on mescaline, among other things. But let's get back to the direction, now that we've established the players. Like I said, Gilliam's weirdness is a good fit for the film in visual and tonal terms, but there's one problem. I feel like there's a key underrepresentation that keeps this film from perfection, and that's the philosophical heart of the book. As detailed, the film is a madcap carnival through decadent Americana and appropriately explores feelings of fear and loathing, apropos of the title, but every time I watch it, I just can't help but wish it would settle down for a minute and linger on some of the more wistful and thoughtful elements of the novel. It does happen at a few well-timed moments, the highlight being a fragment of the novel's best paragraph, where Hunter ruminates on the high watermark of hippie culture. But outside of that, for anyone who's not so intimately familiar with the book, I would imagine that these moments are easily washed away and forgotten amidst the ocean of drug humor and situational absurdities, to the point where many will probably question what the movie was even about. 
And that's a shame, because nestled in the core of this anachronistic smorgasbord is a beautiful lament for the spirit of an age. Don't get me wrong, the movie is still excellent, I love it to death, but I do think it's more for the fans than anyone else. Maybe I'm wrong. As always, I am curious what you guys think, but that's the way it plays to my mind. And this movie is thankfully very well loved by a big pool of pretty beautiful weirdos. You know who you are. And so the film, like Dr. Gonzo and indeed Hunter himself, lives on in a way that can only be characterized by the esteemed Raul Duke. Hit it, Johnny! There he goes, one of God's own prototypes. A high-powered mutant of some kind never even considered for mass production. Too weird to live, and too rare to die. I somehow never get tired of that line. It's great. And now, to send us off, a passage from the novel as promised, Jamo style. Strange memories on this nervous night in Las Vegas. Five years later, six, it seems like a lifetime or at least a main era, the kind of peak that never comes again. San Francisco in the middle 60s was a very special time and place to be a part of. Maybe it meant something, maybe not in the long run, but no explanation, no mix of words or music or memories can touch that sense of knowing that you were there and alive in that corner of time in the world, whatever it meant. History is hard to know because of all the hired bullshit, but even without being sure of history, it seems entirely reasonable to think that every now and then, the energy of a whole generation comes to a head in a long, fine flash, for reasons that nobody really understands at the time, and which never explain in retrospect what actually happened. My central memory of that time seems to hang on one or five or maybe forty nights, or very early mornings, when I left the film more half-crazed and, instead of going home, aimed the big 650 lightning across the Bay Bridge at a hundred miles an hour, wearing L.L. Bean shorts and a Butte Sheep Herders jacket, booming through the Treasure Island Tunnel at the lights of Oakland and Berkeley and Richmond, not quite sure which turn off to take when I got to the other end, always stalling at the toll gate, too twisted to find neutral while I fumbled for change but absolutely certain that no matter which way I went, I would come to a place where people were just as high and wild as I was. No doubt at all about that. There was madness in any direction, at any hour. If not across the bay, then up the Golden Gate or down 101 to Los Altos or La Honda. You could strike sparks anywhere. There was a fantastic universal sense that whatever we were doing was right, that we were winning. And that, I think, was the handle. That sense of inevitable victory over the forces of old and evil. Not in any mean or military sense, we didn't need that. Our energy would simply prevail. There was no point in fighting, on our side or theirs. We had all the momentum. We were riding the crest of a high and beautiful wave. So now, less than five years later, you can go up on a steep hill in Las Vegas and look west. And with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see the high water mark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. Thanks for watching. I truly love making these videos, no matter how many people watch them. Be well out there in the madness, my friends, and I'll see you soon.